Yeah, I'm the founder of Echai Network. We host engaging startup networking meetups in 25 global cities in 15 countries. We do a lot of those interesting online series. One of the recent one we started is books for entrepreneurs. I read a lot of books. I recommend all my friends to read books, and this is my opportunity to talk to the authors of those books. Uh, so this is the third interview of our series. Uh, we started with Sudhir Sitapati, who wrote the CEO Factory, and Dhruv Nath, who wrote Funding Your Startup. This is the third interview of that series. Uh, we have Mihir Dalal with us, who has written Big Billion Startup: The Untold Flickpath Story, and he is also a journalist. Mihir, if you can tell us a little more about what is Big Billion Startup. Sure. So, Big Billion Startup is it's a biography of Flipkart, which is India's most iconic and pioneering internet startup. It's an unauthorized biography in the sense that neither the founders nor the company participated in the book as such. But I had access to a lot of people who were closely involved in building Flipkart, including um, their senior executives, investors, etc. So that so this is what the book is about. And who is Mehir Dalal? Why he chose to write this book? And what was that key trigger for you to get started? I've been a journalist since two thousand and eight, mostly written on business. And I started on this book project in August of two thousand and eighteen. But for more than four years before that, I had been writing on Flipkart and on other internet startups for Mint, uh, which is India's second largest uh, business daily. I had been uh, Flipkart had been at the center of my coverage, and I found it an absolutely fascinating story. One of the main uh, things behind doing this book was that I felt that it was while so much had been written about Flipkart, the story had not been told in its entirety. Most people who had read about Flipkart or uh, who knew a bit about Flipkart only knew. that the side of flipkart that appeared after 2014 because that is really when the company became very very uh, famous and uh, that is when the startup scene really came into its own but there was this there were seven years of flipkart before 2014 that had really received very little uh, coverage and most people were you know completely in the dark about it one of my purposes one of the purposes behind doing the book was to narrate the story in its entirety and one of the striking feature of the book uh, so those of you who have read this book have written about is the very well research what was that process for you that and any interesting anecdote you could share in you know, while researching for this book yeah I, so uh, research in terms of research first of all i conducted more than 250 interviews for the book and this is from the four plus years that i had spent um writing on subcard so the 250 interviews were conducted pretty much in that one year period between from august 2018 to um uh, july 2019 so more than 250 interviews went through dozens or like way more number of hours in terms of video and other interviews online of the bunsels their investors and other executives then of course reading up a lot of business books uh, on tech and on other business on and on other businesses one of the books that i found absolutely fascinating was the biography of hiro bai ambani so that may not have a, a direct kind of connection with the flipkart book but it it's actually extremely instructive to read that book because it it gives you a sense of just how entrepreneurship has evolved in independent india not just since liberalization but in pre liberalization and then reading up a lot about chinese internet companies american internet companies like amazon alibaba google facebook so again because uh, the internet space is uh, it has come into its own and it has helped realize an ultra globalized world there are just so many things that are similar between india china and the us and a lot of what happens in silicon valley and in china then filters down to india so i read up a lot about these various internet businesses yeah this this was this was it and i mean goes without saying hundreds of news articles whatever is available on the internet <laughs> yeah and then even roc filings and the company's filings in singapore 
uh, and uh, Mir, as a journalist, you covered Indian Indian internet space, uh, so you would have a certain opinion of way of looking at Flickr. And then once you decided to write a book, so you would go deep down and, and go much deeper in your resources. So any uh, new revelation you find that you had a certain opinion about Flickr, but after researching or while in the process of writing a book, this is what you discovered. Oh, uh, generally, one thing was that because I had been covering Flipkart so closely for four, four and a half years, I thought uh, at the start of the book that I would just have to fill in gaps in my knowledge and um, do some basic reporting about uh, the pre-2014 uh, era. But what I realized was that I actually knew, I mean, I wouldn't say very little, but I did not know nearly as much as I thought I did when I had started working on the book project. So that was one uh, thing that became very clear to me very quickly, like within three, four months. The other thing was, this was not my impression, but it was the impression that had been uh, created about Flipkart by many people in the startup ecosystem. So th this was this idea that an innovative company, it was basically just a copy of Amazon's and it was a Me Too company, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I found, uh, even before I started working on the book, I did not buy into that argument. But especially after I started working on the book, I realized that this argument is just like, is, is just tortured. Because when you actually go down, when you actually think about it, selling stuff to people, even selling stuff online to people is not an idea that was pioneered by Amazon. It's not a brilliant or a genius idea. Anyone can think of today someone comes up with the idea of selling health services online, the idea by itself is nothing great. Similarly, Amazon did not invent online retail. But what Amazon did was that it really recreated and it shaped online retail in its own fashion because it was able to consistently introduce and improve upon its innovations. So that was exactly what Flipkart did in India, right from cash on delivery to even how to engage with its customers, how to build its brand, how to hire people, who are the right kind of people to hire. So you can just go on and on. These are things that really Flipkart invented as such and learned on its own. And those are as innovative as anything that a pioneer does, right? So in that sense, Flipkart was a true pioneer. So I found this to be one of the, and I wanted this to come out through the book that this is not the story of a company that did something ordinary, just like copying an idea that was uh, from an American company. It was a truly innovative company. And this is a great chronicle of rise of Indian startup ecosystem. And you mentioned that, you know, when you wanted to write a book, you referred some uh, Chinese internet company, American internet company. So probably those who would want to write a business book in 2025, this book would become a, one of the reference point. If you were to summarize one line that, you know, what is that larger message you would want to communicate with this book? It's difficult to just say one line, but uh, the idea was to narrate how a pioneering internet startup is built, is is built and is told all the uh, good, the bad and the ugly that is involved in this process. So I would say that is the idea. And which is the most unexpected feedback or response you got for this book? One of the things that I was pleasantly surprised by was that most people uh, who have read the book, including some people who have been featured in the book and as like pretty substantial characters, all of them told me that it was A, an accurate portrait and B, it was a balanced portrait. Uh, some of them did not like certain things that were written in the book uh, and the way they were portrayed, etc. But they said that on the whole, it was a balanced portrait. It was not as someone's, say, one side or another side uh, has been exaggerated or downplayed. So in that sense, I was really happy because that was what I wanted to achieve with the book. I was, but I was worried that because it's a controversial book, many people may not, many people may think that it's not a fair and balanced uh, portrait. And I believe this was your first book. 
Yeah. What was that process? That in okay, now I'm going to write this book and identifying a publisher, publishing it, and distribution of the work. What was that process like for you? It it was very daunting to be completely honest. I had been approached, as I said, I started this book. I started working on the book in August of 2018, but I had been approached uh, by a by a major publisher to do a book on internet companies in 2015. You know, as you remember and as you know, that 2015 was really the peak of the hype about startups, and because that is the first year when billions of dollars just came rushing into the startup scene, so. there was just so much interest at that time when the publisher approached me i had suggested a book on flipkart but i was really not convinced about it because i just did not primarily because i did not think i could really do a book and secondly because the flipkart story hadn't ended it was not clear where it was going but then flipkart sold uh, the sale of flipkart happened in may 2018 to walmart and then i knew that okay this is now the perfect time to write a book and by this time i had also done enough work and i'd done several long form articles on subcon so had some confidence that i'd be able to do the book when when i started thinking about doing the book it was actually me and a colleague of mine with whom i used to work very closely so we we reached out to an agent we held a few initial discussions about how we do the book etc cetera, etc cetera. but then she had to pull out of the project at the last minute because of some personal commitments and so it was just me and then it was even more daunting but then i realized uh, once i started talking to my agent i started talking to people i would interview for the book i realized that it's just best to take it one step at a time and then when i wrote up my proposal we and my agent started pitching we received immediate interest from publishers so that was the first major kind of encouraging sign because Uh, we had offers from i think some five publishers so uh, it was clear that okay this book is, is going to attract interest and from there it was just uh, focusing on the book and so once because of my experience as a journalist mm-hmm. i just uh, adopted the same process that i do at mint and yeah then it was in that sense the reporting aspect wasn't so difficult what was difficult was the writing aspect and uh, you know i basically had to take a sabbatical from mint uh, to uh, work and finish the book so yeah so it was a very different and very kind of exhausting experience because literally for for a year i was working 14 hours every day without a break um, no breaks on saturday sundays and even if you want to take a break the thing was that you can't really take your mind off it because you're just so obsessed by it and you're just constantly thinking about it so that was really the most uh, both enjoyable and the most exhausting aspect because yeah you just cannot get away from the book so you're just completely immersed in it right which is your favorite book it's this a uh, book by this intellectual called ashish nandeep called uh, the intimate enemy okay and what would have been the alternate title of this book it would have been something like a billion dreams that was one of the things that i had suggested but i but then i thought it was too bland so we went with big billion star yeah. and because of that big billion day or was there any specific party because of a big party because of big big uh, billion day but uh, mostly because uh, i thought that flipkart was the representative in a sense of india as such in terms of how when flipkart was at its peak it was representative of india's goals of becoming a superpower like uh, us and china you know with the same way that say an amazon or, or an alibaba you know uh, are reflective of the prowess of the te- technological prowess of america and china i thought flipkart was that and flipkart had officially said that they are india's answer to amazon or alibaba so i thought a billion dreams was in that sense uh, yeah uh, representative uh, this thing title and uh, what is the kind of book that you would like to read not necessarily written yet but you would be interested in reading this kind of a book i think the everything store by brad stone which is about amazon i think that's one of the best books i have read on business similarly the ambani biography which is called ambani and son that is i would say actually the kind of book that i would want to read about business because that is really a very no holds barred look at an entrepreneur who 
has had a huge impact on India, both positive and negative. But the, the book is written in a way that you would write about anyone, like any regular person, rather than you know. so. Basically, it has you know just so much. Like it is written in a way that shows all the ugly and the positive sides of Ambani, and I think that kind of book, unfortunately, is not possible or it's very hard to do now yeah. uh, about such a powerful man. But yeah, that is the kind of book that I would like to see. So if somebody is up for it, go for this topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mir, yeah. What is the advice you would want to give aspiring authors and who would also want to write books? I I would say that don't try to cater too much to an imagined audience in the sense that. a lot of people uh, write books because they say that they want to inspire others etc i i don't think that is the right approach to have uh, for a for a author or a writer i think the right approach is to really ask yourself why do you want to do this because while you may say that you want to inspire others i i don't think that is actually <laughs> the real motive that you have so i i'll say that you have to be honest uh, you know with yourself and uh, i i think it's also good to take your time over it that was one of my one of the lessons that i learned uh, from this book so I was able to wind up wind up the project in a year but i wish now that i had taken maybe you know month or two more not that there would have been substantial changes at all in the book but just i think it it's is better to be as thoughtful as possible so take your time over the book and don't be too daunted by the kind of the the project as a whole because when you start writing it is just impossible to imagine how you will ever finish the book you know because there is so much research so much you know editing that goes into the book that it it is just too daunting at the start to think of the end so i would say that always like kind of focus on the day and the next day and nothing more so so of course you'll have an overall idea for the book you'll have a, a narrative you'll have themes but don't overreach and think about the middle and the end about how you're going to do this and that at the start just take it one day at a time in which particular uh, part do you enjoy writing the most in this book i i really enjoyed writing the first half because i thought it was it was a very charming story about how these two guys who were completely anonymous and likely to become such big entrepreneurs really found their way against the odds so i found the first half very charming and, and very uh, great to write and those of you who have read the book and if you read the book the second part has lot of drama and thriller and me <laughs> you mentioned that uh, on your social media account that there was a rights being sold and there is a series coming up so what next for you Yes, yeah, so this so there is a, a TV series being made on this. What next for me? I I definitely want to uh, do more books, but I'm going to take my time over it, and I want to figure out what I want to write about next. So that's what I'm. Awesome. And so, friends, those of you are watching this video or reading this conversation, uh, if you happen to be in Ahmedabad, we are setting up a mini library of sorts where we are showcasing the books of all the awesome people that we interviewed. <laughs> so you can get access to it and i'll be sharing the your amazon link and flipkart link also because of, uh, so you can get access to it and uh, what would be the take uh, key take away for the founders from this book i think there are many but among them is that avoid uh, uh, this mindset where you think that a you are invincible and b that technology is going to do its own thing because for me the the one of the key insights of the book while i was reporting on it was the way sachin's approach to business changed because in 2014 15 because earlier uh, he had shown uh, great courage and fantastic vision by believing that technology is going to bring a huge change in the retail business but he was as thoughtful about how that change is going to happen uh, whereas i found that with a lot of people who are ambitious and also really good at things like figuring out a long term vision uh, the trap that they fall into is 
this kind of belief that oh, technology is definitely just going to change things. Of course, technology is going to change things, but the key is to actually find out how and then to make it happen or to be part of it. I think, especially if you're running an internet business, obviously you are in the business because you think that the internet and technology are going to change, are going to bring huge changes in that uh, particular industry. But just because they are, doesn't mean that you, you are necessarily going to be part of it or you are the one going to be bringing about those changes. So I would say that it's very important to avoid that kind of mindset. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mihir, and we wish you all the best.